Nigeria has become the world's number one contributor to deaths of children under the age of five. According to reports by UNICEF, Nigeria overtook India last year to secure the unenviable position. The development comes two years earlier than estimated by the World Bank, and it paints a worrying picture for child mortality and survival in the country. In 2018, the World Bank had said Nigeria would take over from India as the world capital for deaths of children under the age of five by 2021. In the latest report titled Levels and Trends in Child Mortality, UNICEF said Nigeria recorded an estimated average of 858,000 500 deaths in 2019 against India's 824,000 deaths out of 5.2 million under five deaths globally. The numbers from both countries are almost a third of all deaths before age five globally. And now to take a look at the implication of this disturbing report is a senior lecturer in the Department of Community Health and Primary Health, uh, Primary Care at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. She's done extensive research on child survival, development and nutrition. Dr. Alera Roberts joins us now via Zoom. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Now, are you surprised at the details of this report by UNICEF? Sadly, not at all, not at all. We, we knew this was coming, and it's very sad that we're in the 21st century in 2020 and we're still discussing this in Nigeria, despite all the accelerated survival strategies that we know that can work. I'm not surprised at all. And uh, the UNICEF report uh, lends uh, urgency to the calls by health advocates uh, for Nigeria to show commitment and prioritize management of certain diseases uh, causing deaths of children under five. Why do you think the government doesn't seem to be listening? It's actually, it's actually cause for serious concern. To date, it is clear that political commitment is really just a tongue-in-cheek, let's say the right things, let's get the foreign um, agencies to think that we're doing the right thing, but they really haven't done as much as they could have done. And this is something we've been talking about for the past three administrations. I mean, this is the same country that, because there was private sector involvement, has been able to get a polio-free certification. So we're not talking about this is a rocket science. This can be easily done. And if we want to do it, it can be done. But you cannot continue to not strengthen primary health care. You cannot continue to not strengthen child survival strategies, routine immunization. You cannot continue to have the weakest, the, the most important branch of health service delivery handled by the weakest arm of government, and then continue to say that you are part of the Committee of Nations and you are addressing child mortality. We can't be here in 2020, the most unenviable uh, position, and one that we really need to address very strongly. Mm. One highlight is the issue of nutrition. Experts have lamented the removal of about 800 million Naira budgetary allocation for uh, ready-to-use therapeutic food, and that's our UTF, uh, from the 2020 budget. But there's the school feeding program. Is that too little or a step in the right direction? It is too little too late. We're talking about under five mortality. Those who die before their fifth birthday don't get to school benefit from school feeding programs. There's also the concern about Nigeria's poor data collation culture that uh, making it get in a clear picture of the crisis more difficult. Is it possible that even the data used for this report might be inadequate to show the true scale of the situation? I, yes, it would be. The truth of the matter is I work with the Wellbeing Foundation. I'm the vice president. And one of the things that we know we put on ground at, way back in 2007, 2008, was the personal health record, which was supposed to be held by women for, as soon as they get pregnant and goes on to monitor the child's growth and progress until age five. It's been taken up by federal government. It would not be, it wasn't um, distributed, it wasn't sent out to the states to use pregnant women don't have access to it. And in that case, we have very poor data collect, co collection and collation. 
The same people who are trying to deliver the um, healthcare are the same people you are required, you are requiring to collect data in the most, um, you know, difficult manner possible, filling in all kinds of registers. Where there are too few midwives at the grassroots. We had the midwife service scheme, and we don't know what has happened to that. It's, it's gone into, it's gone into, gone moribund because the state governors couldn't and wouldn't take it up because it wasn't going to fit into their state civil service. There are all kinds of bottlenecks civil service that are telling on the under five mortality indices we're seeing in the country. We can do better. We should do better. And if it's going to take private sector involvement, then we know that there are private sector agencies that are ready to lift a hand and help. And all government needs to do is to be committed to this at the highest level and remove the bottlenecks. Let's get to work. This report clearly shows that the situation is likely to worsen even after the pandemic. So what should we be doing with these findings? We should be strengthening primary health care. We should be strengthening primary health care service delivery. We should be strengthening the recruitment and retention of midwives and health care workers who can work at the grassroots. Don't forget that we have a huge humanitarian emergency right now going on in the Northeast, and we're all turning a blind eye to it. Even the routine immunization, the seasonal malaria eradication programs and prevention programs are being attacked. Health facilities are being set on fire. Healthcare workers are being attacked. And we're all turning a blind eye as if it's not happening. I mean, we, we, need, to, we need to really get a handle on this. I think, you know, this kind of thing nearly is, is so embarrassing that if, I, if, if there's an administration that is concerned, they should be really very concerned about turning this around and can do so very quickly. There are enough strategies. We know what to do. We just need for the bottlenecks to be removed so that we can get on and do it. Hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Roberts, for your thoughts there.